deliciousness of life. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Not far from us is my most favorite place in the world. It's tucked away in a little corner. And if you blink, you might miss it. But the Lord, being as gracious as he is, led me to this little haven, this little, this little piece of heaven in the middle of nowhere. It is the place dreams are made of. It is a French bakery. And inside this French bakery is everything delicious. It's so hard when I go in there and I have to suffer because I can only pick so many of the goodies that they display in those big glass windows. Each and every one is handmade and they have what they call the little petite desserts. Rows and rows of delectable strawberries dipped in rich milk chocolate. Chocolate mousse tasting like, like, like truffle from Belgium in these beautiful little chocolate cups and little wafers sticking in the top. We've got little cherry, little, little tarts, tiny little tarts, little pieces of cheesecake, little flans. I tell you, when I go in there, I go through a, a whole travail. Lord, help me decide which one to choose from. And I have to try and limit myself, but usually I always take one more than I should because who can resist? Do you know that your life is an entire tray of deliciousness. Delicious little bites, delicious little moments. Life is filled with goodness. And today in this message, I want to remind you of the goodness that we have in life through Christ. Because you know, life can get difficult. And let's be honest, finding those delicious moments is as difficult as finding that little French bakery. Sometimes it feels so tucked away and out of place. And you've got to look for it and you've got to turn left and you've got to turn right and you've got to keep your eyes peeled. And if you're lucky, there you find this haven. That when you step through the door, you step into another world of deliciousness. And there you are, surrounded by all these goodies. No, I'm not getting off the point. I'm wanting to remind you of the abundant life that Christ has given us. What is the point of being a believer if we are not living the life that he's given us to live? As your life stands right now, it is divided into lots of small parts. Every day, every event in your life, is divided up into little bite-sized pieces. Do you know that? Little circumstances, little things that happen from the moment that you get up in the morning. There's your little moments for relationships, your little moments for peace and rest, your little moments to do work, your little moments of interaction with different people, and each one of them are like a piece of life. Now, when you come and you approach this piece of life, are you enjoying the deliciousness of each one of those pieces? Are you enjoying the life of Christ in every single moment? Are you savoring it? You know, by the time I sit down with my assortment of delicacies there on the table, any, mini miny, mo, I pick up my favorite, I close my eyes, take a breath, and I bite. You know, now my husband, he's a scoffer. You know, he just buys all the hop, 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 and five minutes, not even five minutes, and they're gone. It's like, savor it. You know how long it took us to get here? At least savor it before you scuff it down in five seconds flat. No, not me. I'm a savorer. I will sit and nibble ever so slowly on that little, little tart until every last crumb is gone because I, I want the moment to last. When last did you enjoy life like that? When was the last time that the sweetness of the Lord was so delectable in your life that you could taste it, that it lingered, that it came with you, that it followed you, that it remained in you everywhere you went? God wants you to enjoy life. Jesus came so that we might live life and live it with abundance, so that we might enjoy every single hour, every single minute, that we may live it to the full, fullest that he has for us. But let's be honest, the pressures of life come. 
You're on the highway and you're heading past and you're late and oh my goodness, I've still got this to do and that to do and you've got your foot flat and you're way past that French bakery. You don't even think about it. In fact, maybe it's, it's, it's in your mind, oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, but I've got to go and do this, this and this. And before long, you're so busy running around eating dry bread and just chugging it down with plain water that you've forgotten that life is meant to be delicious, that Christ died and gave his lost blood so that you could enjoy the fullness of health, so that you could enjoy the fullness of prosperity, so that you could enjoy the fullness of good relationships. But you know what? You've got to stop and taste them for them to become full. Nobody rushes a good meal. It takes time. But in our instant society, there's no time to sit down and enjoy life. There's no time to enjoy the goodness that God has given us. So you're rushing around taking dry bread here and there and can't understand why you're choking in your spiritual life. And so you're reading the word and you're getting into bulldozing and you're speaking forth and you're warfaring. But when did you stop and enjoy the sweetness of his presence? When was the last time you tasted and saw that our God is Good. When last did you enjoy the deliciousness of life? Just for the pure taste of it. Tell me, what's going to set us as a city on a hill? What sets us apart as believers? Our fantastic intellect? Our great skill? Was it... Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, endurance, gentleness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. It says there's no law against this kind of thing. What is it that sets us apart? What is it that sets you apart? How hard you work for God? When was the last time all that work and all that effort you put in shone on your face? Because what the world sees is what's staring them in the face. They don't just see what you do. They see what you are. And let me tell you, when you are around somebody that's full of joy and full of life, you want to keep hanging around such a person. How often are you trying to teach people the way instead of show them the way through the joy that is inside of you? Do people look at your life and say, I envy you. You have such joy in your life. You know, this whole world is aiming for happiness. And here we as believers have an entire buffet of delicious happiness in our life. And we're not taking the time to put it to our lips and to savor it. So what is it that makes life delicious? Love. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It makes life delicious. And you know what the best place is to find love? is in a rewarding relationship. When you love somebody and they love you back, those have got to be the sweetest moments. Come on. If you're married, tell me how you met the person that you fell in love with. And tell me you don't start to wonder. Tell me you don't start to feel butterflies and a soft feeling come into your heart. I don't care if you're in the middle of a fight with them right now. If you go back and think to the moment that you met, okay, how about the first time you kissed? Hmm? The first time you held hands? Hmm? If you were married, the first time you made love? These are the delicious moments in life. These are precious moments. When we give love and receive love, that's when we taste the goodness of life. But you know, you become a bit like a married, old married couple with the Lord. Those, those romantic kisses at the beginning that, that left your knees weak, that left you not needing any food, that left you flustered. And in your, in your head in the clouds, it becomes so humdrum. Now it's quick. Hello, kiss. Goodbye, kiss. Let's kiss and run out the door. It's just kind of like a, a kissing ritual now. What happened to the butterflies? What happened to the gooseies? What happened to that nice, savoring kiss? Hmm? Think about any relationship. See, if you're a mother or a father, think about the first time you held your child in your arms, that dramatic moment in your life when you look down in their face and realize they are mine and I am theirs. These are precious moments, but somehow we have those moments, we know that they're there, and then we tuck them away in that little bakery on the street corner and get on with life. We forget that we should continue to enjoy each moment as it goes on. 
I remember getting such a conviction on this. I was so humble before the Lord. I, you know, we were so busy, especially when my children were little, about ages three and four, the ministry really took off. And I remember my second eldest being about six years old. And I looked at her one day and it struck me. She's not three or four anymore. And then I thought, what happened to the last two or three years? And when I try to think, oh, I could think of everything that happened in my life over the last two or three years. But could I pull out outstanding moments in the life that we shared, that I shared with my daughter in those last two or three years? And I'm, I'm ashamed to say I could not. And it was a wake up call. And I just went to bed and I felt so, so humble before the Lord. And I just put my head on my husband's shoulder and I said, lovey, where have I been? And he said, lovey, we've been busy. And I thought, yes, we have. We've been busy. We've been busy at the wrong things. Because if we do not take time, even as apostles, prophets, leaders, I don't care who you are. If we do not take time to enjoy the deliciousness of the life God has given us, what life do we have to impart to the world? If we cannot enjoy the deliciousness in our beds first thing in the morning, if we cannot enjoy it as we walk through our corridors in our homes during the day, if we cannot enjoy it in our workplace, then what's the use of going out there and imparting more to the body of Christ? If we do not have these moments in our private lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, then what have we got to show out there? If we do not take advantage of the intimate moments in our life and make those precious, what are the building blocks of our lives? What do the rest of our lives reflect? And right back then I decided that's it. I'm going to take the time because you know one day, very soon my daughter will be 10, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21. And she'll be out the home. I only have these few short years with her. Am I making the most of it? Am I taking the time with her to invest everything God has given me? To lay a foundation because I don't have much time. <sighs> life, I tell you. Life can just speed by. In my memory, my daughters are still lying in my arms a few months old. And at the, the preaching of this message, now we're talking 15, 16 years old. What happened? Can I look back and say that I enjoyed each phase, each season of their lives? And did I invest everything into them? You know, we get so busy doing the work of the ministry and, and, and yeah, doing your business, doing all the stuff, that when you come to an age where you look back over your life, can you pick out the delicious moments? And I pray that when you do, you find many of them. Because this is God's blessing and inheritance to us. And what about joy? Joy, to have a little bit of fun. But I don't mean just fun because we're going out to have fun. I mean to learn to have fun in every circumstance, to revel in every single moment. Yeah, life's tough. And all of us have to work hard. In this day and age with the economy the way it is, some, a lot of parents both have to work. Who can afford these days? I understand. But are you having fun? You know, fun can be found. Joy is a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's inside of you all the time. Oh, my work's not fun. Then make it fun. Are you enjoying those hours and hours of data capture? Are they fun? Make them fun. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Put life into life. Put joy into life. Revel every moment. Because once this moment is gone, let me tell you, it's gone. This, this even this message, once it's gone, it's gone. Once the time is over, it's over. Have you lived life to the fullest? Have you tasted the sweetness of this exact moment? Even as I'm preaching, you're feeling the anointing. You're feeling something stir up in you. Don't just sit here and think, what can I learn? No, no, sit and revel in it a little. Enjoy that feeling. Taste it. Feel the Holy Spirit. Feel the Lord Jesus with the revel in every moment of your life. Don't rush through it. Don't rush through your hellos and goodbyes with your husband, with your wife, with your girlfriend, with your friends, with your family, with your mother, with your father, whatever. Take time to really look at them, to appreciate them, to appreciate the goodness that you have. After that, peace. Peace is what makes life delicious. To not be swayed by what you see. Yet there are times 
when life can be difficult, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't have peace. Why? Because peace is a fruit of the Spirit. It is something that is with you all the time. And you can be in the middle of the biggest crisis. But you know what? Why don't you, in your mind for a little bit, sit on the shore of a beautiful beach. And the sands are so white. And the palm trees are so green. And you've got that lovely smell of coconut in the air. And the waters are so blue and crystal clear and warm. And there's this beautiful breeze blowing over you. You can experience peace at any time. But you're so busy rushing and doing and going here and there. You don't stop to just breathe. Enjoy the air around you. You know, there was a phase where we were so busy in San Diego. We were going here, there, and everywhere. We, you know, always on a time schedule. This store's going to close. We must meet with this person. We must do that thing. And I remember a couple of years back, my husband and I had the wonderful opportunity to go away for a few days. And we decided, let's go in San Diego. And we went to a resort not far from where we had been. I mean, it's in the area that we're even familiar with. We're here all the time, but we never actually holidayed here. So we took a weekend away. And we got in the car and we started driving around. And it's crazy. We were driving on streets and roads that we had driven pff, countless times. But because I was in a holiday kind of mood, because we were relaxed, I said, I don't, I don't recognize this. He said, babe, that's always been there. You just never noticed it before. And suddenly it was like I was looking at the same scenery I'd seen so many times for the first time ever. And I just felt the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thought, man, how much time do I really take to just open my eyes and look around me? To take in the beauty of everything, to notice things, to see things, to, to, to just take in this precious beauty God's given us all over. I don't care whether you're in the city or whether you're in the country. There's always something to take in. And I thought, how seldom I take to just revel in the moment. We're so busy onto the next moment, onto the next moment, that we forget to have peace in this moment. To enjoy the every emotion, to enjoy every thought, to enjoy every feeling of this particular mo moment right here and now. Okay, so you're sitting in, tr in, in, in traffic and you're sitting in your car and it's hot. You know what? Put some music on. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Let your mind wander to that beach with the palm trees because the Lord Jesus is right there. And enjoy the moment because the Lord knows by the time you get home, you've got to put dinner on. The kids are there. The phone's going to ring. Some sales guy's going to bang on your door. So you know what? This is probably the only peace and quiet you're going to have all day. Enjoy it a little bit. Revel in the moment. Stop being so quick to rush off to the next thing. You know, the crazy thing is when we take time to enjoy each moment, God is more able to lead those moments. But you know, sometimes I can imagine that the Lord is setting up these little moments in our lives, much like a domino effect, you know, and he knows, okay, I've got this moment. So when she walks here, this will happen. And when he does this, this will happen. But you know, we're so busy rushing through, we skip five of the dominoes and then wonder why our life isn't going the direction that we want it to go. God sets up all these moments so perfectly in our life. But we start to say, rush into the next moment. Got to rush to the next moment. Then we start, don't stop to enjoy this moment to the fullness and miss out the plan that God had for us. You cry out, Lord, I need a break. Lord, I want to go on holiday. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Are you enjoying the moment that you have right now? Because let me tell you something, if you cannot enjoy the deliciousness of life right now, I don't care where you go, I don't care what you do to try and feed that need inside of you, you're still going to stay empty. Doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what you do, you're still going to stay empty, you're still going to be washed out, you're going to be tired, you're going to be stressed. Why? Because life comes from the Spirit of God which is within us. And if you just stopped for a second and enjoyed some of that life, you would taste and see that He is indeed so good. You know, when you come to that place of peace, you have the patience and endurance to hang in no matter what. Because you know what? The trial isn't so difficult anymore. When you can start praising the Lord for the circumstance that you're in and seeing the Lord in that circumstance, 
and even giving it back at Satan and saying, you know what? I'm even going to enjoy the fact that it's, I don't know how many degrees outside. I'm sitting in this car, stuck behind this truck that's overturned. I'm going to enjoy this moment. I'm going to kick back. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to sense his anointing. And I'm going to have the best time of my life right now. I'm going to have joy. I'm going to have fun. And I'm going to just take that little delicious moment in my life and I am going to savor it one little crumb at a time. Life becomes good. Don't wait until Friday night. Don't wait until Sunday afternoon. Don't wait until your vacation break to enjoy life. Enjoy it waiting for an elevator. Enjoy it having to change that dirty diaper. Enjoy it if you're pregnant. Enjoy it if you're single. Enjoy every moment of your life right now. But you've got this, this thinking, oh, well, I'm on the grind. Then I must aim towards a time where I can enjoy life. I've got some news for you. You're never going to reach that point. If that's, if that's your mentality... You're never, ever going to reach that point of contentment and fulfillment because you're not going to find that fulfillment over there somewhere. You're going to find it right in here inside your spirit. You're going to find it right here in the presence of the Lord Jesus. You're going to find it in every moment of your life. How do you think Jesus could walk this earth and be so full of love and grace and joy and make jokes as he went? He was full of the presence of the, of, of the Father. He was full of it. He enjoyed every part of life. Are you? Are you making each moment count? But you know what the problem is? When you're so busy striving to the next thing and the next thing, you miss out on the goodness, which is such a precious, really precious gift of the Spirit. You miss out on the goodness, which means to stop and taste the fruit of your labor. You're so busy working so hard and achieving and accomplishing and pressing towards goal, 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 goal that you never stop to eat the fruit of the labor that you have done. In fact, by the time you stop to enjoy the fruit of that labor, it's gone off already. It doesn't even taste so good anymore because you're on to the next five projects. And you think, oh, I've just got to do this if I just push on through with that and push on with that and push on with that and push on with that. You don't stop to enjoy your accomplishments. In fact... When you strive hard and you cut that business deal and you get a good thing, you don't even enjoy the money that comes in from it. It just doesn't even taste good in your mouth because you're pushing to the next one. You're pushing to the next one. Oh, when we've, when we've got this much, then, then we can take a break. Oh, no, no, no. When we've done this, then, then, then I can take a... No, no. Stop. The Lord has given you the good things in life. So that you can enjoy them. It says in Psalms 127 verse 1. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that built it. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes for nothing. Do you want to know what takes the taste out of life? It's like walking into that French bakery and sucking all that divine rich chocolate flavor out of that mousse. You know what does that? It's simply not taking the time is thinking that you can build this house by yourself. You're laboring in vain. You're laboring, hoping that if you work hard enough, you're going to reach some goal one day. I'm here to tell you that goal is here. That goal is now. Forget trying to reach your goal one day and realize that you are standing in the middle of your goal at this very minute, at this very hour. And God is there right now to give you the reward that you think you've got to work so hard for. We are striving towards peace. You think you're striving towards joy. You're striving till you come to that place of rest. You are standing in it right now. And because you're so busy running, you don't see it. You're missing it. You're running right over it. You're running for a ghost, a phantom. You know what it's like when those kids blow those, um, those soap bubbles? There's this big soap bubble and maybe it's catching the reflection of the sun and it looks so beautiful. And you are like that little child running off to that bubble. But what happens when the child reaches out and grabs hold of it? It bursts. There's nothing in there but air. That's what you are doing in your life. You keep running towards happiness and joy and peace as if it is something that is out there that you must somehow attain to. If you work hard enough, if you pray hard enough, if you study the word hard enough, if you're righteous enough, you will be able to reach this bubble. But what you will find when you grab it, it pops. 
It's not real. But let me tell you what, it's real. It's the sweetness of our Lord Jesus who is living and abiding in you right now. You are standing in a moment of peace and of joy and of deliciousness right now in your life. You don't have to run off to the rainbow. You have that rainbow and that promise right inside your spirit. The reason why life doesn't taste good is because you're trying to do it all without him. We serve him on Sunday and Monday, I'm back to driving the car. Hmm? You know what the worst is? When you finally do get a chance to go on that vacation, to have that Saturday barbecue, to, to do that thing that you think is going to make you feel so good because you've been striving for so long, it doesn't bring you the peace. And when you leave that place, back to the stress, back to the grind, you don't ever feel that soaking peace in your spirit. It is a burst bubble because you've tried to do it without him. There's nothing worse than a tasteless dessert. There's nothing worse than seeing a beautiful chocolate mousse with a little cherry on the top and you taste it and it's one of those sugar-free, fat-free rip-offs. It's a rip-off of the real thing. And you're expecting this rich, creamy, calorie-filled, fat-filled, sugar-filled, give it to me! Hallelujah! And it's empty. Well, that's what life's like without Jesus. And let me tell you, there's a whole world out there eating sugar-free, fat-free, everything flavor-free dessert that they've made with their own hands. Because without the life of Christ, everything in life is tasteless. It has no flavor anymore. It has no joy. It has no peace. It is him who gives us the joy and the peace. The sweetness is found in him. That's why it's said in Psalms, taste of me and see that I am good because I'm the goodness. I am honey on your tongue and on your lips. I'll satisfy every need, every craving that you have. Any of those women that are premenstrual that crave sweets, you know what I'm talking about here. Hmm? Well, the Lord can satisfy that spiritual craving that you have inside of you. And you think that you have to earn it. You keep thinking that if you work hard enough, you're going to attain it. But actually, you're driving right past that little bakery instead of stopping and coming on inside. Stop. It's time to enjoy every bite of life. And the first thing that you can do is stop and start to practice his presence. You know, through the day, so many thoughts go through our minds all the time. So many, so many fears, thoughts, plans. When was the last time you directed all those thoughts to the Lord instead of just to yourself all the time? Oh, and I must do this, and I must tell so-and-so to do this, and I Why don't you try this? Instead of wrapping yourself up in your thoughts until you're so bound you trip over your own feet, why don't you reflect those thoughts those thoughts to the Lord. Instead of saying, I need to do this. And you say, Lord, I need to do this. And Lord, I've got this plan. And Lord, what do you think about that? You know, something very incredible happens. Firstly, you're immediately bringing Jesus to the center of your life. You're tapping into your spirit. It's powerful. Secondly, when you're directing those thoughts at the Lord, let me tell you, it's quite challenging. Because then you realize how many of those thoughts you probably wouldn't want to share with him. <laughs> You think, well, I couldn't exactly share that thought with the Lord. Good, it, it acts as a good conviction. But you know what? It brings the Lord back to the center of your life. It stops chasing bubbles out there, and it brings you to a place of realizing, well, actually, I am standing in joy. I am standing in peace. And if you can come to that place of directing all your thoughts to the Lord instead of just to yourself and everybody else, you can start bringing him to the center of your life. And I promise you, it's so easy. It's so easy. Give it a try. The minute you finish this message, the thoughts that come out of your mouth, the, the thoughts that come into your head, the words that come out of your mouth, instead of just rambling, direct them to the Lord. Oh, I need to go make dinner. I've got the kids to take care of, and I wonder if Michael needs a diaper change, and I hope they don't make any noise. Lord, you know that I've got to go make dinner. Lord, what do you think about that? Does that seem so silly? 
You've got to think you've got to even do the spiritual things with God. No, bring him into the center of your life. Because let me tell you, he is the center of your life. He is peace. He is joy. He is life. He is the richest chocolate mousse filled with all the goodness and cream and sugar and deliciousness that you could imagine. And if you took but a moment to just share your life with him, he would share his life with you and you would start to feel a peace sink so deep inside of you. You wouldn't care that you were stuck in the middle of a hurricane. You wouldn't care. You wouldn't fear. You wouldn't be bound by guilt and condemnation. Because there is no guilt in him. There is no fear in him. There is no bitterness and anger in him. And if you were in him, those things would fade away. It would be so simple. You make it so complicated. And then, as you take the time to allow the Lord to be part of your life, how about taking the time to let others be part of your life? Oh, I think maybe as moms we have this worse, you know, I jump out of bed in the morning. I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those, let's just crawl out of bed, let's rise slowly. You know, I'm an upper jumper because I've got so many things on my mind, but the time my eyes open that I, I, I leap, I, I just leap out there. And I'm already doing five things before my feet are on the floor. That's just the kind of person I am. I think a lot of moms are that way and I'm still, I've got to get this kid ready for that and I must do this and oh Lord, the laundry and da 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 da. Stop. You're so busy running around for your family. You're so busy running around for everybody else. Did you stop to enjoy time with them? I got my little uh, two-year-old, well, he'll be too soon. And he, he bangs on the door. He's, he can climb out of his cot now. So he climbs out of his cot. He comes down to my bedroom door and he bang, bang, bang. And he says, hello, it's me. And everybody's got to wake up and jump to his tune. You know what I'm talking about if you've got kids. And he'll sit there carrying on the door. Hello, it's me. <laughs> and my first impression one morning was to get up. Okay, fine. Let me go get you some breakfast. Let me go give you your juice. Get the stuff ready. And the Lord said to me, you know, I just feel his conviction deep in my spirit. And he said, you know, these moments are so sweet. And these moments go by so quickly. Why don't you just... Spend some time with him this morning. Let him in and just be. Instead of running and doing the next thing, just sit with him. Just sit. And I did that. I opened the door. I let him come climbing on our bed. And I just sat there with him for a while. And you know what? We had such a good time. My husband and I and him, we tickled and we played and we cuddled and we kissed. And I thought, man, we're so quick to rush through life. It was late one night. We'd gotten to bed really, really late. And here again, knock at the door, my youngest daughter. She's always, oh, she, you, you've got to literally tie her down to get her to go to bed at night. You know, she has like five excuses why she's got to come and knock on our door. Mommy, I'm thirsty. Mommy, I can't sleep. Mommy, you know how it is. And I thought, oh, Lord, I'm so tired. Not tonight, Ruby. And the Lord said, why not tonight? I'm like, well, because I'm tired. He says, deal with it. So anyway, okay, fine. <laughs> You know, we'd been so busy. We'd been running around so much. I'd kept promising the girls, and I was saying, we'll have some family time soon. We'll get together, just us, and we'll just have this time. And the Lord said, how about now? I said, Lord, it's one o'clock in the morning. He said, so? So I said, come on in. Well, next thing you know, everybody was on our bed. And we had such a good time. The Lord was there. We had a little devotional. It was just so precious. And you know, when I look back, I think... 20 years from now, when I look back at the time I brought my kids up, it's those moments that I'm going to remember. And you know, I could have missed it. I could have missed it because I'm so busy running around. I was busy working so hard on my computer. I was in the process of getting the Dreams and Visions symbol dictionary together, and it had been hours. It was already 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, and I was plowing through, and my husband buzzed me on chat. Now, you must know how bad it is when even my husband, who's in the same place as me, has to buzz me on chat to get my attention. Is anybody getting the picture that I'm a driver? He buzzes me, and he says, Baby, you've been pushing through long enough. Why don't we go sit up on the balcony on our little swing seat and have some tea and take in the moment? And my first impression was, But I've just got, I've just got one more... And then again, I felt that conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, let it go, stop. So I did that. I s saved where I was. I switched the computer down and we went and we sat. And it was a beautiful sunset over the ocean. And I won't easily forget that. 
And he put his arms around me and I snuggled into my husband's chest and we didn't even need to say anything. We just sat there and enjoyed the moment. And I thought again, man, had I rushed through it, if I had pushed through, I would have missed the deliciousness of this moment. How many moments are you missing in your life right now? That moment to just talk to somebody about the Lord. You've been, you've been saying, Lord, I'd like to witness to so-and-so. I'd like to witness to so-and-so. But let me tell you, when the time comes, it's not when it's convenient for you. It's when you're in the middle of the something, trying to take a call and dying to go out and lunch and please give me five minutes to myself. That's usually the time. Are you going to stop and listen to your spirit and enjoy that moment? Or are you going to rush, rush, rush? You know, the great thing is, when you take that time with your family, with your husband, with your wife, with your friends, with whoever, when you take that time for life, you'll find that the life that is already inside of you starts to bubble up. And when it does come to working hard, when it does come to putting your hand to the plow, that joy, that peace, that goodness, it's filled you up so much. You can work it out. You know what? It's, it's like eating all that good, delicious stuff that helped you put on weight, and then you go and work it off. That's kind of ha that's the, that, that's the picture that we got there. But you know the problem is you're already so spiritually emaciated. It's been such a long time since you binged on anything tasty that you've got nothing to work off. You've got nothing to give out to God's people. You've got nothing to do. You haven't got the power or the strength to push through another day. If you are at the point in your life right now where you feel so dry, where you feel so empty, where you're trying to do what you like, but you just can't seem to suck anything more out of you, then it is time to stop because you have got nothing more to give. It's time to stop and eat something delicious. It's time to enjoy the good things in life, to just stop and taste and see that He is good. To take a season aside in your life that no matter what you're doing or no matter what circumstance you are, to suck the juiciness out of it, to enjoy and revel in every joy of it. When you do that, the next time you have to work, the next time you have to minister and pour out, let me tell you, all that juiciness just gushes all over them. All that goodness just pours out over them. And you know what? You might even be a nicer person to be around. You might even be in a good mood and be the kind of person that others want to hang with. You know, when you're coming in the room and they're heading for the door, you got to look at your deliciousness meter because it is low. You're not the kind of person they want to hang with because they, got you, they take one look at that face and think, man, you need a slice of chocolate cake to sweeten you up a little. Hmm? What have you done today to enjoy life? I don't mean worldly life. I don't mean like as the world sees fun. I mean just the goodness of everyday life. You don't have to go out there and do something to enjoy life. Life is broken up into little bite-sized petite desserts. Savor each moment. Let it fill you. Let the taste of it linger in your mouth. And when you go out there, sharing Jesus, being Jesus, being the leader, being whatever you need to be is so natural because you're so full of goodness, the goodness just begins to pour out. If you're feeling dry, you feel like empty. You feel like one of those cloths that have been wrung out so much you can't get out another drop. I want you to stop right now, wherever you are. I want you to take a breath and just, Jesus, take hold of him again. Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your spirit of conviction and also of love. I pray that you would reveal Jesus to each and every one. That they taste and see that you are good, Lord. Oh, Father. I just pray that you would just speak to each one, deepen their spirits, remind them, remind them of the joy that you've given them, remind them of the love that you've promised them. Bring the goodness out of life. Lord, I open the closed doors and I just call those rivers to start gushing forward, those rivers that have been shut down deep inside of them, that have been closed because, because of all those rocks and the stones and the disappointments and the pushing through. Just stop so the river can come out. Stop trying so hard. You keep blocking it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, for your love. And especially, Lord Jesus, for your sweetness.